Hello everyone, Jeremy here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the ProScan 7-inch Internet Tablet. This is something that I saw in Big Lots this week, and it's also something that I've seen in Big Lots uh, last year, around Christmas time, where these tablets seem to be uh, quite popular for gifts. Uh, you see the price tag on this thing is $69.99, but at the, at the time of this recording, there is a two-day President's Day sale going on where you can find this tablet for about $54. So, as far as deals go, I say that's a pretty good deal for price alone. Now, we haven't actually gotten into whether or not the tablet is going to be worth that money, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But just to tell you a little bit of the specs of this tablet, it is an Android tablet. It is a 7-inch Android tablet. And you can see some of the specs over here on the left side. It's a 7-inch capacitive touchscreen with a 1.2 gigahertz processor, 4 gigs of flash memory, which can be expanded to 32 gigabytes. You've got 512 megabytes of RAM. You've got a camera on the front, and it runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, which is not the latest version of Android, but it's by no means uh, the oldest version of Android that you find on devices these days, so not too bad considering its price. So as you can tell by these specs, this is something to be considered a low-end Android tablet, but that is also reflected in the price. Now one thing about this tablet in particular that is pretty interesting is the fact that it also comes with a keyboard and a case which is quite nice because that's something that you usually don't get with tablets. Even with more expensive higher-end tablets, you just get the tablet itself. You never really get any accessories. So it's nice that they threw these two accessories in for you. So that can be quite useful. Uh, if we take a look along the side of the box, well, it will tell us uh, just basically the, the specs um, in a little bit greater detail. Uh, it is a rechargeable battery, of course, and uh, you'll be connecting to Wi-Fi, and the display resolution is 800 by 480, so it's not a very high-resolution display. In fact, I would say that it's a low-resolution display, but again, all reflected in the price. So, now that we've sort of drilled that one home, let's open this up and take a, take a better look at it. There's a little tab right up here at the top where we can just easily pop that open and pull out everything that lives on the inside. All right, we'll take this box away. Now inside here, I'm not gonna even open it because you know it's pretty obvious what's in here. This is the plug, this is the power adapter. You don't need to see the power adapter. We know what that looks like. And wrapped in plastic, like a big sandwich of electronics is the tablet, so. Let's just rip that open. Give it a nice little undress. And there we go. It's almost like a, it's almost like a book. You can just sort of open it and close it like that. We open it up. There's a very strong, strong plastic smell coming out of here. Uh, here's your user's manual that comes with this along with some uh, warranty information. You don't care about that. Why would you? This is the keyboard of this tablet. And then if we take away this little styrofoam type part and the tablet is resting within. Take this plastic off. Everything's wrapped in plastic. And here is the tablet. There's me. That's my reflection. But yeah, this is the tablet. Um, as you can see, it um, there is a somewhat of a thick bezel around all the corners, which, depending on who you are, can be a good thing or a bad thing. It can be a good thing if you consider the fact that you can hold it like this without necessarily touching the screen and activating things that you may not want to uh, activate. But there are some people who prefer to have as much screen real estate as possible. So. You know, it really just depends. Uh, the camera is located right up in the upper left-hand corner of the tablet. So if you wanted to take a selfie or something with it, you know, you would just hold it like this or video chat. You know, you can do either or. Or you can just hold it in landscape mode and you can do that as well. Let's see if this tablet has a charge to it 
Well, I guess while we're at it, we can take a look at the buttons up on the top of the tablet. Starting right here is the power uh, switch right here. That's where you turn it on. Standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is your USB port for charging the tablet. Um, right here is, well, you could charge it or you could just transfer data to your uh, computer. This right here is where you can charge the tablet from the uh, from the adapter that comes with it. Let me just amend this. I don't know at this time whether you can charge it through USB or if you have to use the AC adapter, but the USB will be used for transferring things to your computer if you wanted to do that. And this slot right here is where you will put your uh, SD cards, if you have some, to expand your memory. And the microphone is also right there the reset button, and the speaker grill right there on the back. So let's try to power this on and see if it has any charge. There it is. So it does have a charge in it, and we're going to wait for that to boot up. Let's just put that along the side. Let's take a look at this keyboard here. So the keyboard comes embedded inside of the case. You cannot remove it, and it's, it doesn't appear to be a Bluetooth keyboard. Instead, it has this, it has this USB cord right here that you would just plug into the tablet. All right, so let's bring out the tablet. It's all nice and warmed up. All right, let's just unlock it. Stand away unlocking things. And of course, when you do it, it always you know, just wants you to set it up and everything like that. Now, here are some first impressions. Looking at this screen, this screen is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I really thought it was going to be very, very uh, washed out. I felt that the screen was going to have absolutely horrible viewing angles. But for my first impression, as I'm tilting it away from me, the viewing angles... It doesn't seem as bad as I thought it would be for a tablet that's $54. As far as how it feels, you know, it is definitely is plastic, but it has a little bit of weight to it. It doesn't feel like a premium device, but it doesn't feel cheap. I did a video on another tablet I got from Big Lots a long time ago, the D2 pad. And compared to that, this feels much, much better than the D2 pad uh, did. D2 pad just really felt well, really cheap. This one actually has a bit of heft to it. And then on the back, they kind of have this sort of like this very um, somewhat grippy texture. Can you hear that? So it's not just completely smooth plastic. It's a little bit of a texture. It's got a little bit of a grip to it. And I would say it feels quite nice. All right. So this is just, just your standard Android uh, home screen right here. Uh, just Moving across the screens to me for first impressions feels absolutely fine. It doesn't doesn't feel laggy or slow or anything like that. Uh, let's take a look at what apps are included with this. So let's just go into the app menu. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely tell by looking at the icons that the resolution uh, is definitely showing through because the icons they uh, you know they just don't look as crisp as they would with a modern device, but then again, we got $54 here. Comes with a YouTube app already installed, so that's good. And as far as uh, your apps go, I am not seeing any Google Play action in here, so I don't think that this tablet supports uh, Google Play. Oh, huh. we are not connected to the internet, so we uh, couldn't look at that anyway. Uh, we will connect it to the internet in just a minute, but hmm, maybe it, it's weird. I need to see if this supports Google Play or not, but here's some apps that comes with this are very standard. There's the Google search app. There's the gallery that's standard in um, many stock Android devices. There's the YouTube app, you know, the, the, the downloads menu, ebook reader, explorer, uh, generic email calculator, and then you just have some standard uh Android widgets. So from what I can tell, it doesn't look like this has been really skinned um, all that much. But let's just connect this to the internet and let's um, take a look at some of these pre-installed applications when they are connected. 
So now that I have it connected to Wi-Fi, I have to say I've noticed some things that are kind of peculiar to me. Uh, for example, it comes with the Google search app and it comes with the YouTube app pre-installed, which are Google applications. But yet there is no Google Play. You can't get to Google's official app store from here. But at the same time, it has Google Now. So I can go to Google Now and say something like, How old is the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> the Bachelor of Liberty? No, let's try that again. How old is the Statue of Liberty? According to the Foundry Heritage Foundation, the Statue of Liberty turns 126 years old. So yeah, it has Google Now and you know, it works fine. But when you want to go to an app store, when you go up here, it takes you to a third party app store and not, and not Google Play. This is something called apptoid.com and it's not an app, it's just taking me to the web browser where you can install it and then install the applications to go along with it. And then there's also something else inside of the app menu. Uh, where is it? App stores. And this is just a selection of third party app stores that you can use because you can't use Google Play even though it has access to Google now and YouTube and Google search are pre-installed, which is actually gets quite strange. So some of the app stores that they recommend, the One Mobile App Store, the Slide Me App Store, Aptoid App Store, and the Amazon App Store. Uh, between all those app stores, you most likely are going to find the apps that you want to have. Uh, I've only had personal experience with the Amazon App Store, which is quite good. So you can go ahead and download that on this tablet just fine, but no access to Google Play, which is actually quite strange. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the YouTube app. It is the official YouTube app. And yeah, here you go. So if you just wanted to uh, just look at something really quickly here, uh, let's just pick. Well, let's first, let's turn the volume down because this is other people's stuff. Oh, we're gonna turn the volume all the way down. And uh, I'm just gonna click on this, whatever this is about these puppets. And you may notice if you have a uh, somewhat modern Android device that YouTube does not look like this anymore. Because you, because with YouTube now, uh, you can move the video down to the to the right hand corner of the screen and continue to navigate YouTube while still playing the video but this is obviously this is an older version but you would have to install the latest version and it has crashed <laughs> so yeah uh, this is this is real world stuff here people but yeah, if you find your way around that, you can. And now we're just right back to the to the home screen. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this at this at this keyboard and uh, see how this all works. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this plug here, and you're going to have to plug that into the top of the tablet. Then it has to be held up. This is how the keyboard is going to be set up. Once you plug it in, there's kind of like these three claw-like clamps on the bottom and on the top of the case. And then over along the back, there's this stand here that you just simply pull out and then it will sit the, it'll sit the tablet up and then you're free to type to your heart's content. So, Let's say I just wanted to search uh, something with Google um, cats. C A T S. Enter. 
and it just goes to the web browser and is using Google search to look for cats. And then there you go. Uh, let me see if I can just if I can focus on this screen, which you probably won't be able to see all that well. But it is up. Uh, let's go back here. And you can just kind of use it as a touch screen if you want to scroll. Or you can just use the directional button on the keyboard to move up and down. So if there's like a word processing application that you have that you want to use, then, you know, you can type along on this thing. And as far as the keyboard goes, keyboard doesn't seem all that bad either. Um, they do have anchor keys on the J and the F. So, you know, you'll know where your fingers are at all times. The keys are spaced uh, very close together, but, you know, it, it's, it's, not, it's not bad. It's a nice, compact keyboard. The buttons go down quite deep, almost like a, almost like a typewriter. That's how, that's how tactile and deep it gets. But, yeah, it doesn't seem like a bad keyboard at all, actually. And then you still always have access to, to the touchscreen whenever you want. So, you know, basically, first impressions of this tablet are actually not, not bad. Not bad at all for, for $54. Now, as time goes on, it's going to really determine whether or not this is something that you will want to buy because sometimes things seem great at first, but then you get a, a month or two down the line and then things start really going bad. And I can't say whether or not this tablet is going to end up like that. But just based on first impressions, I have to say that uh, the viewing angles on the screen were better than I thought that they were going to be. The keyboard is actually quite decent. I didn't, I didn't really have a problem with the keyboard. Uh, the screen is low resolution, but it is to be expected. But the colors on it, the colors of the screen, you know, they seem to pop just a little bit. They don't seem too bad. The speed, again, not blazing fast, but as of right now, not a lot of lag and stutteriness. There is some weirdness going on that it seems to be half supported um, by Google. And but at the same time, you can't get into Google Play, but you do have Google now. It does come with a YouTube app. It does come with Google search. Uh, so I guess those are all just side loaded on this tablet, you know, from the factory, I guess. But it's good that you have access to that. And it's not skinned with any, at least from what I can tell, any of um, ProScan's own personal user interface so basically that means that what you're getting here it seems to be very 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 close to a pure android experience without a whole lot of bloatware and stuff thrown on top of it so that is a good thing so so far yeah not bad you know strangely impressed by something that is this inexpensive and it's always great to get this keyboard and it's always great to have this case and then, you know, when you're done, you just unplug the keyboard part and then just undo this and close it up. There's like a little magnet right here. You can't really see it, but it's like a little magnet that just kind of snaps it shut and put it in your bag and do whatever you want to do with it. Easy to nice, easy to put in the bag and go and travel with. So, yeah, that's my first impressions on the uh, ProScan 7-inch internet tablet with keyboard and case. So, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jeremy, and I'll see you later. Hey, everyone. So, before you go, I wanted to tell you just one more thing about this tablet that I didn't notice during the recording of the first part of the video. And that is the Wi-Fi download speeds on this tablet, in my experience, are absolutely terrible. And I don't know why. I have two of them. I have two of these tablets. And for some reason, downloading a file like a 46 megabyte file of Angry Birds took me over 20 minutes. My home internet connection speed is about, on Wi-Fi is about 20 megabits per second down and about 10 up. 
and nothing else that I have that connects to that network, the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network, downloads things at that slow a speed. Now, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the distance because even when I was right next to the router, I was still downloading kilobytes. Just every, like I, I would download just a few kilobytes every, I don't know, about three seconds or so. Really, really, really slow. And my only guess is that perhaps the Wi Fi radios that ProScan puts into um, those tablets are just very bad. Very, very bad. Now, your experience may vary. Perhaps, maybe I just got a bad batch. But, I don't know. I have two of them, and they both have the same bad download speeds. And in my opinion, I don't really know why the use... I don't understand why you would have a tablet and then experience really, really bad Wi-Fi speeds. Um, at least something that's not comparable to what your home internet connection is used to dishing out. I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I just wanted to let you know that so that if you do go out and get one, keep that in mind and also keep your receipt handy just in case. So yeah, that was just my little update and I'll see you later.